G'day everyone. Day 11, Electrostatic Annoyer. This is a little circuit that I threw together uh, actually a few months ago to, um, well, basically play a trick on everyone here at, uh, at work. It's um, essentially an extension of my um, tapestry electroscope uh, electrostatic wall art thing that I took to Maker Faire. So um, what I've done is instead of lighting up an LED, I've made it make noise basically in response to electric fields. As you can hear now, it's kind of upset with me. It's my pen here that I've rubbed it through my hair so it's charged with static and... No. <laughs> anyway, if you put one of these things somewhere in a corridor, um, particularly in dry weather when the people walking around generate quite a lot of static electricity, it's uh, pretty darn annoying and humorous at the same time. Of course, as you approach it, it generally shuts up because of the way I've wired it up. Depends on the polarity of the static that the person's building up on their body. So some people, when they approach it, it will, you know, start making noise, and other people will shut up. So you can build a bipolar version of it that um, <laughs> that uh, you know will make a different sound depending on which polarity of electric field you're exposing it to. And it has leakage and, and temperature stability issues which make it that much more unpredictable. So the basic idea is the very similar to the charge detection hardware in the, um, the differential electroscopes in the tapestry electroscope. So we have three MPN transistors um, in this extended Darlington configuration. Shut up! <laughs> Let's just turn that off for a minute. Um, and they the last transistor is set up to pull current out of the piezoelectric um, speaker's capacitance. So much in much the same way as I think it was was it day nine? Um, I think it was day nine. We had something doing pretty much the same thing. We have a complementary pair here that has a set point of about mid rail. So the whole thing runs off nine volts. It's on top of a nine volt battery. Yet another nine volt battery topper. Um, so when the this current pulls the voltage on this capacitor down to about mid-rail, this complementary pair will turn on and recharge that capacitance very quickly, and in doing so it will produce a click from the, the piezo. So you get a tone that's essentially proportional to the amount of current being driven into the base of this first transistor. And you know, any AC fields or anything, that this whole front end is very, very sensitive and will pick up all kinds of electromagnetic noise. And in doing so, will you know, set it off, make it at least click at the very least, um, if not make a tone. So it's uh, just a quick and simple one today. It probably isn't the best circuit to make if you, <laughs> if you want to uh, keep your friends because it can be very annoying. I uh, ended up leaving it in one particular location for quite a while and uh, eventually I found it somewhere else completely in the building so people have been moving it around <laughs> between uh, floors to you know, distract and annoy various people. At one point I found it buried underneath like some packing crates in the middle of the corridor. Uh, so yeah, one of those little gag circuits that can be a lot of fun because it's in very very simple. I mean I just dead bugged it here on this piece of metal, uh, piece of PCB. You can see there's the date there when I first created it. Well, not that long ago. Anyway, it's a simple quick one for tonight. Um, I'm exhausted, I'm going to go home and get some sleep. I was playing around with um, flicker LEDs tonight. Some of the uh, the early flicker LEDs had linear feedback shift register um, random number generators, or pseudo-random number generators, so they were a deterministic thing, but they had an internal RC oscillator, and I was trying to injection lock them by mod by driving their um, power supply with a, you know, basically modulating the, the voltage that they were being driven from. That didn't work very well, however, with the particular ones that I had um, lying around because they don't appear to be deterministic. I think they're using a hardware pseudo random, uh, hardware true random number generator, probably either a couple of different oscillators beat against each other, or maybe some kind of noise or bang up, you know, noise source versus bang up source, or I don't, don't entirely know. It's kind of hard to see the die in these ones because the way they're constructed, they have an encapsulant that's a bit, um, has a diffusing you know, agent in it. You can't really see. But looking at them electrically and uh, trying to collect some statistics on their behavior, it looked as if they were actually pretty close to true random, which is unfortunate, because uh, I thought it would be interesting to try and lock them together. 
In particular, those RGB LEDs that cycle through RGB, like I've seen several things like Christmas lights, for example, that have a whole bunch of them. And you turn them on, they all start up in the same colour, and then they slowly drift apart, because they all have, obviously, an internal oscillator, and the phases all eventually drift apart. So I thought it might be interesting to try and injection lock the entire strand of Christmas lights, basically, by modulating its power supply. I'll uh, see if I can get some of those RGB LEDs and have a play with that. Um, yeah, anyway, that, that may or may not come in another video, depending on whether I can find ones, or, or if the scheme even works at all. Uh, another thing I was playing around with was a, um, a continuity, continuity tester. For a long time I've wanted a continuity tester that I don't have to turn on the multimeter for, um, that had many of the properties that you want from a continuity tester, like very rapid response, um, no off switch, produces um, a very small voltage, only a couple hundred millivolts, so it won't turn on semiconductor junctions significantly something that responds only to below 10 ohms or so. so there's a whole you know, lunch list of things that I would like to have in, a, in an ideal continuity tester and the uh, the multimeters that I have around here, well some of the more expensive ones actually take time to boot or they've got laggy continuity testers or that's the worst, like a laggy continuity tester is basically useless but, so I was playing around with the circuit to do that tonight and I wasn't satisfied with its performance at um, differentiating between low resistances and high resistances. I got it to be pull less than like, you know, 50 nanoamps disconnected, which was ideal. But the uh, other aspects of it aren't quite there yet. So hopefully in the next few days I'll beat on that circuit a little bit and we'll have a um, the you know, ideal continuity tester. But uh, that's something I've been playing with for a long time and who knows, I might get it for this uh, advent calendar or uh, maybe I'll never find the ideal continuity tester, but uh, time will tell. Alrighty, um, till next time, bye!